I don't know what the issue was, but we're here, and we're glad that you're here with us. Yeah, and I'm not going to be discouraged, you know. It's a sign of the times, and I'm going to push through with this message. Thank you for hanging in with us, you know. Amen. It's all about Jesus, not us, so perhaps Jesus put on hold for uh, one person to get in here and hear a certain part of the message. We never know. Did the same thing we do all the time, so... Uh, Brother Adam, okay, reset, <laughs> don't touch other, mm-hmm. Minister Paul, my w- beautiful wife Gail running the, the system over there and chatting with you, uh, Brother Adam and Sister Anna have a beautiful worship song, let's go right into that and then we're going to get hot on this message, amen. Amen. <laughs> It really is a blessing. I have an announcement to make. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pushing through that and I'm not looking back because 
The head of this church is Jesus Christ. Amen. The one who slays demons and puts them under his feet and treads on them and says, we have the power and authority to tread on them also. He's the head of this ministry and we give the enemy no quarter, no credit, nothing. It's as if it never happened. We're still standing and the message is still going out. Amen. I want to open up in prayer. I I'm being real serious right now. I'm not just talking. I'm, t I'm commanding. Jesus Christ, you are welcome in this place. We invite you down. Lord, we invite you down. Send your Holy Spirit presence down. Father, I call directly unto my high priest, Jesus Christ. We have had enough of these uh, schisms and stuff with our computer and equipment. Lord, we ask you to take the reins and that we're onward Christian soldiers and we're ready to forward march on this enemy. Because he put all things under our feet and made us the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. It says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Well, there's seed begging for bread. Yes. I want to open up with the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. Psalm 23, if you got a Bible. You know, I've been thinking a lot about, are we good? We're good. Okay. <laughs> I can't see nothing up here, y'all. They say, walk by faith, right? I'm going to preach by faith. You know, I've been thinking about these hard copy Bibles I have. I have several of them. And they're a blessing. I was thinking about, you know, Bible Gateway. I love Bible Gateway. And it has about literally, I don't know, 50 different translations and stuff. And it's really cool. But, you know, the enemy, I don't care what anybody tells you. The enemy, the devil, he can't come and change this. This is God's word. But you know what he can do? And I, Anybody else been thinking like this? Say yes in the chat box or something. Let me know. Because I read it all later. He can change things on the internet. Yeah. Because it's written by man. Mm -hmm. And so I've been going back to old school. Uh, straight up reading the Bible. Works for me. Anyway, I want to say that. So we're going we're gonna to do that right now. We're going we're gonna to pray this together. My wife and all, I will pray. You could read along with us or... Uh, in your Bible or online, give you a second to get to Psalm 23. I just been led to pray the Scripture, and so I want to open up this service in Scripture, Psalm 23. Ready, babes? Yes. So we say, "The Lord is, is my shepherd; I shall not want. He, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, and He restoreth my soul." He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Amen. Got my oil. In the name of Jesus. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. Go ahead, babe. Surely, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. There they are right there. Manifesting in my life. All. How many days? All. All the days of my life, including Saturday nights. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's our destiny. The house of the Lord. But for now, we're down here in the house of prayer. In God's house. And we're... Uh, gathering together. So I want to go to the book of Acts 2 and we're going to pick up from there. I want to thank I want to thank Sister Isabella or Isabel. Let me think real. I think it's Isabel. She sent me this bookmarker. It's beautiful. Trust in the Lord with all in thine heart, and lean not on thy own understanding, and all thy wise acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and it's got the footprints in the sand. And I needed it tonight. I needed a bookmark, and I remember, oh, I got a good uh, bookmark. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sister. I did need this tonight, even, so it's right there in Acts 2. And let's get into the meat of this work. Let me say this, as, as we go into this message, and we've prayed, and, and we've worshipped, if you have a prayer request, 
We have many people that could take it down, right? You, you don't even have to leave the room in there right now. Give us your prayer requests. We are in prayer daily, and uh, I've been increasing my prayers. And so, if you have prayer requests, just believe that God can God can hear, and God can heal, and God can answer according to His perfect will. And that's why we pray. So. Put it in the box. I don't know who's here tonight on there. I can't see him. I think I saw Brother Adam for a second. But we will pray. Okay? So let's start off. The Lord was showing me something. We're going to be in Acts 2, verse 1. The Lord was showing me something, and I wrote it down. You know, a few years ago, I don't need these notes in Jesus' day. I just, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be good. A few years ago, and I want to say like 2013, 14, 15, 16, and that, I was warning of like the chemtrails in the sky. And look up, everybody with me? Try to picture that time frame. Because there's like a blanket of deception out here in this world now. And the enemy wants you to forget where we're at in God's timeline. But but he knows where we're at, but he wants us to forget. You with me? Well, let's not forget. <laughs> Never forget where we're at in God's prophetic timeline. I would come on here and I'd talk about chemtrails. I'd be telling my neighbor, I would go into uh, Walmart or Safeway or Sam's Club or whatever. I'd be pointing to it. I'd be like, look at that. That's not normal. You know, big, long chemtrails. And you know, I couldn't get him to, to even listen to me then about the chemtrails, but they're real. But let's let's see how far the hand is moved towards midnight in God's timeline. Now I'm warning people that the sky is changing different colors all over the world. It's literally blue over here and pink over there and green over there all through the whole world. Things have changed. Sign of the times. A lot of people they don't understand the, the they don't understand the signs. Can I go? Can I just freestyle? I'm gonna anyway, but it's polite to ask. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially at church. We're gonna go to Mark 16 real quick. Sorry, there's no notes on this. I'm just flowing in the Holy Spirit. It, you know. There's, there's been a lot of heat coming down from Christians about, you know, following the signs and too many signs. And, uh, you know, if you got Jesus, why do you need a sign? Are we live? Yes. Are people listening? Yes. Well, let's go to the scripture and address that tonight in Mark Jesus' 16. name. Yeah, I believe it's like the last verse or something. Because actually, thank you, Holy Spirit, this right here, thank you, Holy Spirit, Lead the way. Lead the way in our lives, Holy Spirit. This right here is actually what we're going to read about. This is what the disciples, now apostles, in Acts 2, sitting in the upper room, are uh, getting ready to go out and do. But Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem yet. Tarry until you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And as people begin to listen to these messages in the book of Acts, there should become, a, if you're paying attention and listening to the word, and, and following it along, you're, you're going to see that a clear pattern will start to emerge between people who are saved and people who are saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's going to be all through the next few chapters of Acts. You know, when you've been fully baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're walking in the power. That doesn't mean you're not saved, and I'll get to that, but... Uh, for example, let me give you an example. They are now they are now waiting in in the upper room for Jesus to send them the promise of the helper, the comforter. He said, and you will receive power, right? And that's also in Joel 2. And so, but they were already saved. Somebody listen to me, please. This is not, I'm not making anything up. I'm quoting the word of God. And we're going to read it together in a hard, unchangeable, hard book of it. <laughs> I don't know why, but we're in strange times. Jesus, 
and he talked with them and he broke bread with them and he said I gotta go and I'm gonna I have to give my life up I gotta lay down my life for you guys and they're like no 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 don't do it but he did anyway and then he comes back and in the last chapter Acts 1 we've seen how he stayed around 40 days and he went around and you know if you read further you'll find out he met Thomas he says like Thomas you know do you still believe are you still a doubter put your hands right into my uh, the holes of my, my palms and my sides. See, we didn't get to do none of that. But Jesus said, blessed are those who can't see and yet still believe. So according to the word of God, we're just as blessed as they were, even though we are never even got to cast our eyes on Jesus. Matter of fact, it says we're more blessed because we haven't seen. That's the word of God. And so, and then he rises again. So at this point, salvation, somebody listen. At this point, salvation has come to the world. When he died and was buried and rose again, it was for the forgiveness of the sin debt of anybody in the world willing to receive him and call on him. Pay in full. But yet, we're going to learn now, well, now they're going to start about talking about this baptism in the Holy Ghost. And it's with signs following Signs. Yes, signs. So we're going to go to Mark here. And uh, I'm going to start at 15. Jesus speaking. And it says, Jesus said, And he said unto them, Go ye all in the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized, you catch that? I, I'm preaching what Jesus said, y'all. That's all I know to do. Popular or unpopular. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Heaven or hell? Eternal glory or, or damnation? No gray areas, no other weird areas of, what do you call that stuff? Or, Purgatory or halfway in and halfway out, you know, almost to heaven, you know, uh, either eternal life, John 3 16, or eternal damnation, Jesus said in Mark 16. So let me go. Now, watch in verse 17, verify all this. And these signs, what did I just say? Get back, Carol, could you read that, please? And these, what? Signs. Signs shall follow them that believe. So let me ask you, if Jesus said you're going to perform miracles in his name and then the signs would follow, why is everybody so against signs? I'm going to tell you why, because they don't know the Bible. Send me a prayer request. You need to understand that this is the word of God and you can't change it with comments or private messages or emails. These signs shall follow them that believe. So signs follow the believer. Yes. Matter of fact, God said that, you know, that there'll be miracles, signs, and wonders. There'll be signs in the heaven and the earth. Why is everybody so against us receiving signs? I like it. It's better than not receiving any kind of sign. Amen. But yet people are against it. I, I don't get it. Then again, I don't get anything in this evil world. You know, I don't get it. I'm not of this world. I'm of the kingdom of God. Okay, now watch this. This is Jesus talking. It's all red letters. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And I'm going to say, do we have any believers in the house? Yes. Not believer. And it says, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then it says, so then after that, the Lord had spoken unto them. He was received up into heaven and at the right hand of God. And then they go out doing what Jesus said they could do through his power. And so I'm a believer. I'll cast out a demon in a minute when God authorizes me to do so. I'll lay hands on the sick and I've seen them recover. I speak with new tongues. 
I was baptized in the Holy Ghost and I speak in tongues. And it don't matter how many people on YouTube want to tell me I can't. I've been doing it for almost four decades now. And you can't change that. And it's right here in the gospel. Jesus said, it. speak with new tongues. We're going to see that in Acts 2. And you can be healed upon the laying of hands. You can even drink poison if you're walking in the spirit and you just start claiming Psalms 91. Uh, I believe it won't affect you at all. This is how the Christian walk was in the, in the early church being born here. Let's go to Acts 2. And, and, and it shouldn't be no different now. God hasn't changed, so the church shouldn't have changed either. So we're going to get into some heavy stuff here. But you know what? It's good stuff. Everybody like good stuff? Everybody like power and authority from on high? Everybody tired of getting pushed around by demons? Talking to you in your ears and stuff? Cast them out! Yeah. Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. So you watch, if you haven't been yet, and you watch your whole life change. Yeah. Acts 2. Sip of water. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, Pentecost is also known in the Old Testament as the Feast of Weeks. It's amazing. The Feast of Weeks. And it breaks it down to days. So Pente means 50. I've explained this before. So 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ is Pentecost. It means 50. But it's also in Deuteronomy and Leviticus 23. It's known as the Feast of Weeks. And it's coming up here, I think, in June. Just a little factoid that I find amazing. Okay, now. And so, they were told to wait there. Everybody remember that? Go and tarry there and don't leave Jerusalem. They're obeying God. They were all in one accord in one place. We're at, in the upper room in Jerusalem. 120 men and women are now waiting for Jesus to send some power now. They're, they're commanded not to go out until they receive this power from on high. Matter of fact, they were told it's a promise. And it says in verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So the mighty breath of God, the flame of God, the power of God came, you know why? Because Jesus said it would. Whoosh! And it falls on top of all of them. Not some of them. All of them. Yes. And what, what Christ is doing here is he's starting his church. That he told Peter that the gates of hell would not prevail against. But notice he said, don't go out till you get this. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You got some stuff prevailing against you? Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Get baptized in the name of Jesus. We're going to see it at Acts 38, 238. Because you know who was in there? Peter. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is also in Acts 10 and 46. That's why the Holy Spirit led me, led me to Mark without any notes. He said, that should be a sign following you. Yes. That's what Jesus said. Sometimes I feel like people are offended by what I'm saying. You know, it's too bad. You know, I'm going to read the word. Yeah. You, know, you know what the Bible says about being offended? Being offended is not a good thing. But this gospel is offensive. We are talking Holy Ghost power to cast out demons supernatural entities that, that hate God having the power to do that and the authority to do that through Jesus Christ's spirit in you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Let's say Jesus three times. Jesus. 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 Anybody know this? There's just something about that name kings and kingdoms 
shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. Do I have any old school, uh, old skill, old school uh, Christians in here that remember that one? Something about that name? Yes. Let me get on with the scripture. It's long, amen. Maybe we should read the singing to Brother Adam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys sound like you got a song request there. So, so when they began, to, so it, anybody here? I, I, I wish I could see everybody. One day I will. Amen. Because Jesus gave us a promise too. Amen. Yes. Anybody here can see in the Spirit? That's what they were doing. As the Holy Spirit fell on them and literally blanketed them in fire, they began to see in the Spirit. Do you understand? It wasn't real fire. The place wasn't on fire. No wood's being burned and their skin ain't being scorched. It's the fire of God that you hear people talk about. And they begin to see in spirit, and, and this is kind of what it looks like to them is these cloven tongues of fire. They are seeing in the spirit now, and, and uh, in, in the same way that they could see the angels in the cave. You too can also see in the spirit. Yes. But there's good things and bad things, so be careful what you ask for. Minister Paul asked at too young of an age to be able to see everything in the spirit. I'm talking, but I know what I'm talking about, you know. So, so they're talking all of, everybody's, every, do you understand it's not just Jerusalem, uh, Jews out there and all of this. It's all different kinds of people. People had literally gathered in the thousands from all over the entire area. And when they began speaking, they could all hear them in their own language, but they were only speaking one language. They're coming up here and they're speaking in tongues and they're all hearing it in their own language, no matter what language they speak. It was a miracle. The church is being born in the power. You with me? Let's go on. Five, now watch this. You're going to see who was there. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. People from every nation under heaven at that time were there. And they're hearing this in their own language. This is a miracle. A miracle. And you know what? It's still occurring today in my life. I've been in churches where someone has stepped up in 1 Corinthians 14 decently in order and began to speak in tongues. And I heard them speaking in English. Every word. That's called interpretation of tongues. But, it, but they weren't speaking in English. But I heard them in English. God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside. Why am I dancing like this? Living on the inside. Because he, he doesn't change. Oh, no, but that was back then. Oh, really? Then how's the church not going to be able to, how's, how are we not going to be able to hold the, the devil back from prevailing against this if they had all the power and the power died and it's not for us? You see, it's common sense, ain't it, saints? Same Holy Spirit. Same God. Six. Now when this now when this was noised abroad, everybody talking about what just happened. A miracle. I could hear the conversation. Hey, so you Arabic? Yeah, what are you? I'm from Africa. You know, but I heard it in African is like, well, I heard it in Arabic, you know. They're amazed. So so the multitude came together. And they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In other words, hold up! Let's call a group meeting. Something, something's going on here. And they tried to rationalize it in their human mind because it didn't fall on them. Whoo! So they couldn't understand. I'm going to say that again. Because the Holy Spirit didn't fall on them. It only fell on the 120 in the upper room. The church, a separation. A church is born. A powerful church. And they're, now they're to go out and reach all these people out there. And they do. Amen. And they do. And we do. But the thing was, they didn't understand at the time. Are you meeting into people they don't understand a word you're saying when you start talking about Jesus? Nothing's changed. They didn't either. When the church was first born. But Jesus is going to send them out. 
And he gave him what? A sign. He gave him a sign. This is a miracle. This is not a human thing. This is a God thing. That Jesus you killed, that was my son. And he's coming again. Woo! -hoo! Let's go. Seven. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? In other words, Jesus of Galilee. Are, 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 and are these people in there? Aren't they from Galilee? See, they didn't have, they didn't have Google Translator. You don't know, no, for real. They didn't, they didn't have Google Translator. God spoke through them. Whoo! Man, that hit me hard. God spoke through them for those on outside the church. And it says, uh, And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? In other words, our, our own language or our own dialect. How could that be? What's going on? You know? <laughs> Whoo! And eight. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? How? How come I'm hearing it in my dialect of African and you're hearing it in your dialect of Arabic when only one only one thing, voice is going out? What one the tongues? You see what I mean? So they're they're marveling. Now watch this. Here's some history. The Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judas, get a map and start looking where these areas are at. I mean, check it out. And Judea and, and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, they were all out there witnessing this miracle. They were there. Uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt. Remember, they're in Jerusalem. And in the parts of Libya. Anybody know where Libya is? They're in Jerusalem. I'm trying to make a point here. And Cyrene and strangers of Rome, you know where Rome is? They're in Jerusalem. They're hearing it in their own language. Jews and proselytes. We'll get into proselytes another day. Proselytizing is when you try to take some and, 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 and drag them into your faith, uh, a different faith. They'd go around proselytizing. They'd try to take members from other faiths and churches and try to convert them into what they believe. That's called proselytizing real quick. But I mean, I'd need more time to explain that. Here we go. 11, Cretes. Everybody know where Crete is? By Greece. And Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues. Now watch this. We're on verse, we're on verse 11. What were they speaking? What were they speaking, the wonderful babe? Works of God. Say it again. The wonderful works of God. In other words, they weren't babbling. They weren't talking gibberish. They were proclaiming the wonderful works of God with a new voice. A heavenly voice given to them. And how did they receive it? By being baptized in the Holy Ghost. They are now declaring God's wonderful you see what I mean? Something's going on here. I could imagine what they're saying now. You know, it, it must have been so amazing that they just started revealing wonders of God that people knew, man, that's God coming out of their mouth. But yet Jesus promised it. Church is being born and, it's, and seeds are being planted and it's going to start to grow. Twelve. And they were all amazed, and they were in doubt. See, what started happening here? Well, they're in the flesh. And the ones that are doing the, 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 the declaration in tongues that just got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Remember, Jesus said, if you believe and be baptized. Well, they hadn't believed and been baptized. You see? So they're, they're, they're basically in the flesh now. They're saying... So, there, what, what, what's the first thing that happens? Doubt. You know what doubt is? It's a faith blocker. If you have faith, you won't have any doubt. If you have doubt, you ain't going to be in faith. Two opposite ends of the spectrum here from believers and unbelievers. 
saying, what meaneth this? In other words, like, what's going on? I mean, what's really going down? You know what I mean? I try to keep it real. What is going down over here in Jerusalem? You know? How can this be? Watch this. Here comes the mockers. Everybody say, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Other mockers said, these men are full of new wine. In other words, someone stands up. You know, he logs into YouTube and he comes into the comments. He don't know nothing about nothing of them. Doesn't know their lives or who they are. Says, so they're the false teachers and the false prophets. And they're drunk. Too real? That's what he said. Oh, you know why they're doing this? Because they're drunk. No, you know who was drunk was the one that said that. I mean, he's literally... They are declaring God's wonders through the power and authority of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, when you get baptized and filled, it's called with the Holy Ghost, and you begin to speak under the anointing and the power of Jesus Christ, there's a feeling that comes upon everybody listening. Yes. And, and they felt that. And so they're scratching their head because they didn't know what it was. They didn't get the briefing from Jesus, or the memo. So Jesus said, go out and you be my memo. You do my briefing. Woo! Nothing's changed. And but Peter, now remember Peter, he was like, after he, he told Jesus, you know what? I'll die before you, I'll die for you. I can't let you die. I can't let you go to the cross. Jesus said, I rebuke you. <laughs> That's what he said. I rebuke you. And then, and then when they go into the garden and Jesus betrays him and stuff, and Jesus being taken down into the the lockup area to, to be tried for uh, blasphemy against God and put to death. And, and he walks by Peter and then the, this, this woman, she said, hey, isn't that one of the guys that was with Jesus? He said, I never heard of him. That Peter is now operating in the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he believed and was baptized. Just like Jesus said. You ready? Yes. Peter stands up. He's all getting up swollen. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> You're talking about my Jesus now. And, and the Holy Spirit begins to speak for him. And you will see him start quoting the word of God from the Old Testament. Peter rises up. He swells up. He squares off. And he's not denying Jesus no more. And he said, this is that. Woo. I love that. He said, this is that. What that? It says, what the prophet Joel spoke of. And begins to quote Joel in the word of God. This is that. Yeah. This is what it is. Trying to explain it to him. He says, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. Now let me ask everybody here. If, this, if, if it was the last days back then, how much more is it the last days now today? Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> How much more is it the last days right now when we're seeing the whole sky change different colors and stuff? Things manifesting in the spirit realm. God's the, talking about peace in the Middle East and uh, withdrawing from Syria. All this biblical stuff. What Syria? The same Syria that people from there came to Jerusalem for. That Syria is real. It's happening now. Nothing's changed. And he says, I will pour out my spirit, what spirit? Holy Spirit, capital S, on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. In other words, things come with this Holy Spirit power. Mm -hmm. You could begin to prophesy. Those gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, healing, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, he could begin to operate in those gifts. I know what I'm talking about. It says, And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my maid servants, and the young and old, young, old men, women. You see, and 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 the upper room where they're at is an example. There was men and women up there of different ages. But is he saying, this is what Joel spoke about. What he just quoted is in Joel 2. This is Acts 2. What he just quoted is in Joel 2.
Joel was a prophet. So this was planned. Right here, see? I need to, sometimes I just have to verify the Word of God with the Word of God. And I've gotten so much better at not losing my place. Joel 2. Where are we at here? Joel 2, 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out <laughs> my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Upon the servants and the handmaids I will pour out my spirit. Now watch this. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. It, this is an end time prophecy. He starts talking, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the great and terrible. You know, we got three blood moons coming. Super boots. And that, they turn red. They turn to blood. Remember, they're seeing in the spirit when they receive this stuff. It's not going to really be real blood dripping out of the sky. It's going to look like blood. You with me? So he's quoting, so now he's quoting the word of God. And you know what? He's doing it with authority. He's standing up to all of these different nations and saying, this is that. What Joel, because you know what? They would believe. They would, they would, it's just like today now. They'll believe it if the old prophet said it. But now you have apostles saying it under the new covenant after Christ died. So many people struggle with this, and I don't know why. It's plain and simple. It's the same God, same Jesus, same Holy Spirit. Nothing's changed. Verse 19, I will show wonders in heaven and signs in the earth, blood, blood, and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. That's also Revelation 6, 12. It's there. About the seals. Revelation 6 is about the seals. Lord, help me get through this. And you know, the reason why I'm stressing this so much is we're in that time. The whole world knows it. The whole world knows the time we're in right now. Revelation 6, 12. Watch this. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and moon became as blood. And it cross-references Matthew 24, 29. And the stars fell from heaven unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Anybody? And then that'll reference another witness of it in Matthew 24. It's amazing. Anybody remember? It says a, a fig tree cast on time. Does anybody remember the story of Jesus cursing the fig tree? He said, you'll never bear fruit again. That was a prophetic message. That's, a, that's another hour. Let's, where are we at, man? Sorry, I was trying to get that revelation in there. I'm good. You're in uh, 20. 22, okay. Now watch this. Ye men of Israel... Hear these words, okay, now, this is the best sermon I've ever heard in my entire life, going on four decades, is going to come out of Peter's mouth right now. Matter of fact, it could be his first sermon under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. I might need to get a drink of water because it gets me excited. <laughs> Anybody there? Yes. You know, before I came into this room, I asked Jesus to speak. You speak, God, to your people because my words have no power. And that's why I love standing back here. Because this kind of stuff, I can't just come at you all day with. God's got to send the message, you know. It's real. So now Peter's getting the anointing right here. And he's going to, it's what he says, ye men of Israel. So he's speaking to a crowd of thousands from all over the nations. And he said, Hear the words of Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved, I'm ready, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Yes. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself also know, because Jesus was walking around doing it. 
He, he said he went about doing good and healing them all. Man, he took five loaves of bread and two fish and fed 5,000 of those 12 baskets with him. Everybody knew this. If there was a Twitter then, it would have gotten shut down. It would have, the, the server would have crashed. Man, this guy just fed 5,000 people. And there's exactly 12 baskets left over. And he had 12 disciples. Isn't that amazing? Good server crash. For real. I mean, I try to present it in a way people can understand. It says, Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God. Let me tell you what, what he's saying here. It was also prophesied by the prophet Isaiah and many other prophets in the Old Testament. And see, they were they were cool with the Old Testament. They were cool with that. Don't just start doing that speaking in tongues stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, for real. Nothing's changed, right? What he's saying right here is God foreknew and prophesied this is that this thing's exactly what happened. He foreknew it and he foretold it. It says you have taken, so this Jesus, the one that is now declaring the wonders of God, he said, you took him, you have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. What you're seeing right here is Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. You guys killed him. And he died for you. And he rose again. And he's now speaking through me. Hallelujah. Yes. 23. 24 actually. This Jesus that you guys crucified and slain. He said whom God has raised up. Having loosed the pains of death. Having loosed the pains of death. Not just for him. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Because it was not possible that he should be holding in it. Hebrews 13, 20. It was impossible for the grave to hold this Jesus that you guys sent to the cross. And there was Romans out there. They could have just bum rushed him and beat him down and crucified them too. But God, in power and authority of Jesus Christ, you need to know the power and authority we have as Christians. 24, 25. For David, see now everybody's like, oh David, they perk up. You know, that's just how it was back then. For David speaketh concerning him. So so, David, so now, what's he doing, y'all? He's quoting the word of God. And that's what we need to do. He said, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved, not be shaken. That's Psalm 16. And understand this, they didn't have numbers back then. The Bible was, was just written down on pages and parchment. They didn't have like a chapter 2 and verse 10 or go to Joel. It was just... They, they, it was on parchment, but the Holy Ghost could bring it up to their remembrance whenever they got under the anointing or called to give a message. They couldn't say, everybody turn your Bible to Acts 2 and 16. There wasn't no New Testament yet. They're creating the New Testament, the New Covenant. Therefore did my heart rejoice, he's quoting David. Did my tongue was glad, moreover, also, my flesh shall rest in hope. In other words, even in my flesh, you know, even if I got to go to death, Jesus is my hope. Yes. And he's constantly before me. And he's saying, what you're, you're seeing demonstrated right now is that Jesus you tried to kill. That's the gospel. You, you know? Because thou will not leave my soul in hell, and neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. 28. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, and thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Your countenance was like, you know, your, 
you, how you felt and, and how your emotions showed on your face. If your countenance falls, then it's like, you know, you're just down you tell man, that person's angry or depressed. And someone just, they're just all happy and beaming and glowing and smiling. That's their countenance is being lifted up. That's the hope David had. But let me tell you something. Do you know what David went through to say all that? Battle after battle after battle after battle. Read it. Huh? 29. I thought it was 27. Is it 29? Men and brethren. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, babes. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Now, whew, this is my favorite part. Y'all ready? Buckle your seatbelt. So, so he's now quoted Joel, and he, they've witnessed a miracle. He's quoted Joel, and he's quoted... Uh, David perfectly and they know it and you know what the the scribes and the Pharisees hiding off listening in the corner they know it too and you know what Peter was he was a fisherman an uneducated fisherman I'm talking about being baptized in the dunamis power and authority of the Holy Ghost you can still have it I'm their witness of it Who? He said, now I'm speaking of the patriarch David. That Now watch this. David. And they're like, oh yeah, David, right? Watch this. David is both dead and buried. And his sepulchre, his, the head of his tomb, the opening of his tomb is called a sepulchre. He said, and his grave is with us to this day. In other words, we can go touch the grave of David. But if you go to the tomb of Jesus, it's empty. Hallelujah. The, the tomb is empty. He is risen. And he said, the same way I'm going up, and they're going to come back in the like manner. And we are in that time right now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hmm. Therefore, being a prophet, still talking about David, and knowing that God had sworn with him an oath, that of the fruits of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. That's recorded in 2 Samuel 7. He seeing that before spake of the resurrection of Christ. In other words, he's quoting all these people, Isaiah was one of them, that prophesied that not a bone, did you know this in Isaiah? Not a bone of Jesus Christ's body would ever be broken. I mean, Scripture fulfilled to a T. He's saying this was all prophesied under your your under your Old Testament and the Old Covenant. He's seen before spake of the resurrection of Christ, so that's fulfilled prophecy when Christ died and rose again. Neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus. Now, he, now he's off of David because he needed to speak to them in something they could understand. Now he's saying, this Jesus, you know what? This is what's going on, folks. It, no matter what nation you're in out there, this Jesus that is speaking through us unto you. You got David in, a, in, in his tomb still, the bones and that. You got Jesus, they can't find him. But he walked around 40 days in the last chapter, remember? People seen him and bore witness. This Jesus hath God raised up. And you know, wherefore, we are all witnesses. Mm -hmm. We saw it. And, you know? Matter of fact, <laughs> I can imagine him saying, it was Jesus that told us to come and wait here. We didn't even know what we was waiting for other than he promised it to be a good thing. A comforter, a helper. And we waited and we prayed and went accord and we obeyed. That Jesus told us to stay right here and not leave until we received this power. And he's not in the grave. But you can believe David. A human being. But you can't believe this man was the son of God. When miracles are being performed right in front of you, 
It's true. Nothing's changed when you try to witness to the lost. Therefore, being of the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father. Remember, we went and said, and then and Jesus went and said at the right hand of God. No, watch this. The promise of the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. And nothing has changed. I received it. You can. And maybe you already have, bless God. He has shed forth this. What you now see and hear, I know it's King James and they're talking kind of funny. He said, look, this is that. This is that that was prophesied. This is prophecy fulfilled. This is prophecy fulfilled. And it's through Jesus, the one you killed. And I, I can just feel some hearts out there begin to tug, you know. You know, and the Holy Spirit's convicting them and stuff, you know. And these guys are telling the truth. Peter's right. Peter's right, man. And they have to start thinking, well, then what's going to become of us? Because we did kill that man. Free Barabbas, they said. Free Barabbas. Trying to stop Jesus to do what he said. No, I must go. And he did it for us, and he did it for them too. So he's not saying this in condemnation. He's saying this in love. Because he died for them out there too. For now, watch this. For David, he's trying to relate to them in a way they can understand, and he's using the word of God to do it. For David has not ascended into the heavens, but he has said to himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Same Jesus in our life. It's going to make our enemies his footstool. 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel. What a declaration of proclamation. He's writing an executive order right now. You know. <laughs> I know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom he hath crucified, both Lord and Christ. Both the head of my life and the anointed Messiah, the Savior of the world. That Jesus. And where's his power and authority coming from to give him such authority to speak to these people? Because Jesus promised he would send a helper. And the helper is there now. And it's coming out of them. I mean, this, this guy's on fire. You know what I mean? Peter is now on fire for God. Anybody ever heard that? Man, you're on fire for God. Peter is now on fire for God and he's breaking it down. But he's using the word to do it. Thirty-seven. I watch it. Man, this is amazing because I was trying to picture it right now, and here it is. Thirty-seven. Well, I've heard that number before, eh, man. <laughs> Someone might get that. <laughs> now, when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Boom, conviction. And it's the same. I, I feel the Holy Spirit moving right now. It's the same thing with us. If we would just go out and declare God's word to someone lost and God would give the perfect timing for that to happen. We just planted a seed. It says, you know, according to the ground it falls on, the Holy Spirit can send the increase and begin to water that seed. Yes. It's the same thing. It's the same Jesus. Nothing's changed. With our witness, we have the same power and authority. And you know what will happen? If the Holy Spirit's there, they'll become convicted. And we're running out of time. Now watch this. Now they were heard this, and they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter, now watch this. It said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, now watch this. They get it now. Praise God. He said, men and brethren, what shall we do? My gosh, if, if someone would just walk up to me and say, man, I could see you got Jesus in your life and you're going to inherit eternal life. And, you know, there's either eternal life or eternal damnation. I get it now and I see all the signs around me. Man, what can I do? That's what they did. Whew, send me someone like that, Lord. 
And then Peter said unto them, now watch, pay, pay close attention, Acts 2, 38. Foundational Pentecostal scripture. Then Peter said unto them, repent first and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. So they were promised and believed, and now he's telling them, you just, you just, it's a promise you believe in. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Man, when I heard that, I couldn't get baptized in the name of Jesus quick enough. And you know what? I came up out of the water speaking in tongues. But do you understand? I was saved at an altar, and I never spoke in tongues. It's two separate events. I'm keep on preaching. Now watch this, verse 39. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are fall off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. Does he still call people today, saints? Yes. Then the promise is unto them. And with many other words did he, Peter, testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. He uses the word untoward, means crooked. Save yourself from this crooked generation is what you need to do. How? Repent. It's not a new message. But no one really preaching this. I'm going to tell you, when I heard this word and I got saved, God gave me a scripture. And he said, the righteous cry. And I was crying. And I remember I got in my car. And I began to go drive to Sacramento for something. I can't even remember. It's been so long. The righteous cry. And I would play the King. Remember he brought me that whole case of King James audios on CD. Still got it. And you know what comes on the radio? Not the radio. This, I had a CD in there. So I'm crying. I hear God saying the righteous cry. And you know what comes on? It starts saying in the righteous cry. And the Lord will deliver him out of all. Their, their troubles, the righteous cry, and God spoke, and so many people say, no, God didn't speak, I'm going to say it again, God spoke, nothing's changed, and he said, that's going to be the name of your ministry, before I even live streamed anything, just want you to know that, that's going to be the name of your ministry, God still speaks to us, Amen. I mean, to me, that's a miracle, I was screaming and shouting, did that really just come on the city? You know what I mean? Like that. I was excited. So what I did was I got some plane tickets and I started going to all these different states. And you know what I did? And there's many here that can testify and witness to this. I began baptizing people in the name of Jesus. All over the United States. I take people backyard in my pool and baptize them in the name of Jesus. And I, you know what I would tell them? I would read Acts 2.38 and 2.39 and say, this is a promise that you will receive the Holy Ghost. This is a promise from God. And you know what? They did. Sometimes right there and then. Other times later. But they did. 41, and now I just want everybody to know. Because we're running out of time. Now watch this, 41. Then they that gladly received his word. Lord Jesus, send us people who will gladly receive your word is our cry. We're baptized. In the same day, on the day of Pentecost, the same day, over 2,000 years ago, there were added unto the church about 3,000 souls. Talk about a revival. And what did they do? He quoted the word, he testified, he gave a witness, and the Holy Spirit came down. And then they got baptized in Jesus' name. And you know what? That's 3,000 now, plus 120. 3,120 are now in the church, and they're all full of the Holy Ghost. Woo! You know what? I would love to be walking with those guys at that church, for real. Talk about signs. <laughs> 41. 
32, now watch this. And they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine. You know what the Apostles' Doctrine is? So they continued in the Gospel. Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection can give you eternal life. And if you don't receive it, then you're going to get eternal damnation. That's what Jesus said. They were all on the same page. And look what they do. Fellowship, doctrine, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Nothing's changed. Same Jesus. And we're that church. 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. In other words, they were just sold out for Jesus, every one of them, with not a single disagreement. And why? They're taking communion, they're praying, and they're staying in the same gospel. They're not going out and making ten different gospels. They're sticking to this gospel. And that's how we got to be. Now watch this, 45. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man hath need. And they continued daily. They did this daily. This is their life now. They continued this daily with one accord in the temple. So from the time the Holy Spirit fell on them in the Holy Ghost and Peter gives us this sermon and 3,000 people get saved from all over all the nations. They just continue and continue in that. It says they're breaking bread from house to house and they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, which is quite amazing because if you do a deeper study on this, and it'll probably come up later in this book if the Lord tarries it, under the Old Covenant, they had dietary laws. But they've been freed from the law and are now under grace. You catch that? Yeah. It's a whole other hour, but you know what? That's why I'm glad Jesus didn't come last night. We wouldn't have got to hear this. Maybe someone's getting saved out there right now. Now look what they're doing. Praising God and having favor with all the people. I'll tell you, when the favor of God falls upon you, you can't notice it. You can't help but understand. People are going to look at you. They're going to be like, man, the favor of God's on that person's life. I've been a beneficiary of that, and it's a beautiful thing. But you have to be walking in the Spirit, and you have to be living like this. And the favor of God falls on you. My gosh. My gosh, what a life that is. Now, favor has just fell upon all of them. How many people want God's favor over your life? Unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor of blessings. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. And this will come up again in the next one. Daily people are getting saved. How? Because they're going out in the power and authority of Jesus Christ. It's with the gospel. That's, that's Acts 2. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I could try to come down from that because I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'm, feeling, no, I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Uh, Minister Paul is feeling very good right now. Nothing I'd rather do than preach the gospel and try to hit somebody that's lost and tell them, you know, you could have this too. Or someone that didn't know that you should be baptized in the Holy Ghost and that you could cast out demons and stuff. You see, it... it People can look at the church and say, well, this person can do that, and that person can do that. And, 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 and the thing is, we can all do that. They were all doing that. But after you get saved, you ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's clear, and, and I'm not done. If the Lord tarries and I come back next Saturday, either way, we're going to be just talking about Jesus for the rest of our lives. It's going to continue and you're going to, it's going to become very clear to you how real and how important it is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I can hear people thinking right now, well, what do we do? What shall we do? Ask Jesus. You're saved, right? And you've repented. Say, Jesus, I'm ready to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the power and authority. I'm ready to become a warrior in the kingdom of God. 
I want to be part of that church. And you know, it don't matter who you are. Nobody really knows how I was when I was unsaved. I'm going to tell you, I was nothing good at all but Christ. He changed me. And no one can take that from me. And no one can steal my hope that he's coming again. Because I've served him too long to believe anything else. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. And may he cause his face to shine on you. And may he lift up your countenance. <laughs> and may he give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. Have a wonderful time. Close out with Brother Adam. And Sister Anna. Sister Anna. I think I've got this part of the microphone fixed now. If you can hear me, we love you. I'm gonna, well, you know what I do is I read every single one of the comments back and I truly get blessed. I read what everybody was talking about and fellowshipping about and I just relax. And I've done my job to preach the word and I get blessed by reading everything everybody has to say. Can you hear us? Type one if you could hear us. Kind of set up a microphone close out screen. I don't think you can. Okay. Yep, oh, one. Can. Thank you, Martha. Good to see you, sister. Thank you, Dottie. Yeah. Love you, sister. I have an email if you want to send a prayer email. You know, my wife and I and Gail will pray for you. Clearly, you found my YouTube channel, amen. But really, I mean, we all can preach. We all can believe. And we don't have much time to get it right. And I am in this season of my life right now where I just know, like, I've got to get this right. It's so close. i got to make sure I'm right with God. And that comes by having faith, you know. That's just how I feel, man. I, I need to be right with God. Sister Dottie, we're playing... Praying for Brother Al. Yes. Nightly. Yes, we are. He sent me, Brother Al sent me an email. Praise God. I, I don't have the chat on my computer, so um, I'll see you when I see you, I guess. But I feel really good right now. How's everybody else feel? Feel like I've been blessed. Amen. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out. And Have a blessed evening, everyone. I'm glad it worked. Thank you for hanging with us to get this thing working. Hey, Sister Martha. Look at Adam.